director versus producer. Who are they? What do they each do? What are these roles, producer and director? And um, so I'm going to talk about that and I'm going to offer some recommendations on how to make that relationship really great. I'm going to talk about creative control, who should have it and why. And then I'll also offer some recommendations on uh, what to do if you're wearing both hats, your director and producer. If you have any questions, ask below in the comment section. And if you're finding this useful, you know what to do. That thing. Quick addendum, I'm also going to talk about creative control and how to exercise it while still enjoying collaborating. Those things are not mutually exclusive. I'll talk about that as well. Welcome to the Independent Film School. I'm Ella Tier. What's a film producer? Please forgive me if you already know this. I'm just making no assumptions about what people know. This is the person who oversees the entire operation, whether they're hired by a production company or they own the project. They um, choose the project, basically, the script, the director, the key players, and they oversee the whole thing to make sure that it all happens and on track on time, on budget, etc. They oversee the entire thing. Um, they may also be the person who makes sure the resources are there, the right people, the right funding, resources, whatever is needed. And um, all the way from the development of the project before it's ever produced, through production, through post-production, and through the distribution and marketing of the project. They oversee it all. What's a director? A film director is the person whose job it is to look at a script and possibly work with the writer to get the script to the best possible shape it can be in. And then from there, their job is to see the movie in their head. So even though the movie hasn't been made yet, they're seeing it in their head like it's already been made. And now the, next, the second part of their job is to communicate with the cast, with the key crew members, in order to, as a group, create the movie they see in their head. That's the job of a director. It's to have that vision, see the movie, and then know how to communicate with people in order to arrive at the movie that you see. That's your job as a director. How do directors and producers work together? Well, the best directors understand that their job is to help the director um, achieve that vision. So they're going to work with the director to get the right director of photography, production designer, uh, the cast, in order to serve the director's vision. And when a producer is genuinely committed to the director's vision, and is there to serve it, a beautiful film will emerge. Things go awry when the producer is really somebody who wished they were directing, but they're scared to. And so they try to direct, they're like a, you know, a backseat driver. And so they'll recruit a director, but they keep trying to get that director to make the movie that they see in their head. And that's when you get into trouble. Um, a, it comes off and often is an issue of like ego, right? That's where the egos come in and it's like, are you giving me input for input's sake or are you actually trying to help me as a director realize my vision? Um, but the real issue with a producer who's a backseat driving the director is that they're not going to arrive at the movie that they themselves envision because the director is not them. And they're not going to arrive at the director's vision of the film because they're not supporting the director. They're trying to make things try. And, and anyways, nobody's vision is realized, not the producers or the directors. That's when you run into trouble. So the best collaborations between producers and directors are very clear cut. The producer is there because they're excited about the script and that director's vision for that script and they are thrilled to support the director to arrive at that vision. So who should have creative control of a, of a film? And I'm talking about independent films. When you're dealing with the studio system, it's a whole other ballgame. They're crunching numbers and thinking about the bottom line 
And somehow, despite that, every once in a while, you get a great film. It's art corporatized, right? I'm talking about independent films. Who should have creative control, the producer or the director? Firstly, what's creative control? I'm talking specifically about who decides that the script is done. This is the script we're filming. So it's having uh, final approval rights on the script. It's having final uh, approval rights on who's going to play the lead roles in the film. And it's final approval rights on the edit. So when you're cutting the film, who gets to say, it's done, this is the film. If you are both the producer and the director, that's not a question. You have and should have complete creative control of the project. That's the beauty of independent films. And the people who come to work with you are there because they're excited about the script, about you, about the vision that they're going to help bring to life. So you're going to have complete creative control. On films that I both produced and directed, Yes, I collaborate in that I want ideas from people, but at the end of the day, the buck stopped with me. I've decided this idea is going to elevate the film and this idea is not consistent with my vision. But what happens in an independent project when the producer and the director are two different people? And I've had films where I was a director for hire, but I was not the producer on the project. In those situations, the producer is likely to want to retain creative control because it's their project. They're pulling together the money, the resources, the people, the work. It's their baby. That said, I would argue that it, you, it always serves the film when a director has creative control because... The whole film is about realizing that director's vision, the director. And when I say director's vision, I mean the movie they see in their head. They're going to know when they see a cut of the film, if that's the movie that was in their head or if you need to keep editing and how, right? They're going to know when they're looking at the final script that the cast, whether that's going to bring together the movie they're seeing in their head, their vision. So in those scenarios, I recommend that the producer and director share creative control. That means that both the producer and the director need to agree this is a final script. They need to both agree on the cast and they need to both agree on the final cut of the film. So in projects where I was a director for hire, I would negotiate that. And I would say to the producer, I do require shared creative control because I don't want to film where I don't have say, certainly in the final cut of the film or and also in the other you know, key decisions along the way. And then my name is on it as a director and it may have nothing to do with the movie I had in mind. So I do recommend shared creative control when the producer and director are two different people. Quick addendum on the topic of creative control because that term is so charged. It's got the word control in it. And so a lot of us immediately associate it with domination, like who's top dog, who gets to tell who what to do. And that's just not how films are made. It's certainly not how good films are made. What collaborating means is that the director is aware of the fact that they have the privilege to work with a whole group of artists who have amazing ideas and that their ideas could totally elevate the film and elevate their own vision and serve that vision. So I think a great director has a very specific vision and then solicit ideas from the cast, from the crew, and decides which of those ideas will serve this vision, which of these ideas might even elevate the vision, and which of these ideas are not going to serve the vision, and so we're not going to do them. But a really great director creates a very safe place um, and seeks input, seeks ideas, and then gets to choose or lose from those ideas um, what will serve the vision. You will make an inferior film if you don't collaborate and, and totally milk um, the artists that you're surrounded by for their ideas. And again, the more confident a director is in their vision, the more open they automatically, spontaneously become to wanting collaboration and wanting input and then choose and lose. Okay, hope that makes sense. If you're both a producer and a director, my recommendation is that you recruit 
two more producers. So in general, I always recommend at least three producers on a project because it's a lot of heavy lifting and you need that buff, you need, you need the power of at least three people. One of them should be experienced. This isn't a project where if you're spending a lot of resources and money, at least one of the three should be an experienced producer. Uh, but if you're a director and a producer, you absolutely must have two more producers. You can do it. It's doable and probably you have to do it. As an independent filmmaker, it's often the case where you, you, nobody's going to pound the pavement and care about the project like you will. You're going to end up producing whether you call yourself that or not. So let's just call a spade a spade and concede to the fact that you are a producer, but you're going to recruit two more producers and tell those producers exactly when on the calendar you're going to take that producing hat off and just direct. Because directing is an all-consuming job and producing is an all-consuming job and they're two very different jobs. So you just want to make sure that during the shoot itself and during the stages of, of pre-production, at least during the late stages of pre-production when you know, you're really getting ready to shoot it, Make sure that you have two other producers and they know you all are in agreement. You're looking at the calendar and you say, okay, we have four weeks for pre-production. Two weeks in on June 10th, I'm officially going to take my producing hat off and I'm just going to direct. And your life on June 10th should suddenly be totally different. All the emails stop, all the messages stop. All of a sudden, you're just looking at shots. You're working with the actors. You're no longer having conversations about how you're going to, you know, deal with the walkie-talkies and what kind of meals you're going to get and, you know, what's the budget here, there, and everywhere. You take the producing hat off and you just direct. And during the shoot, it's critical to do that. During the shoot itself, you need to be completely blind to all the concerns of production and just focus on your actors, on your shots, on directing the movie, on making sure that that vision of the movie in your head is what's happening on the screen. If you try to produce and direct at the same time during the shoot, you will end up producing. I guarantee you, and there will be no director on set. We don't want that for you. Um, okay, those are my recommendations. The producer pulls the resources, finds the people, makes sure that the whole thing happen on schedule, on budget, from development all the way through pre-production, production, post-production, post and distribution. And the director is the person who pictures the movie in their head and communicates with the department heads, with the cast, in order to create the film that they see in their head. Okay? I recommend shared creative control if you're not both the director and producer. If you are both, you should have complete creative control, even if you do recruit more producers to help you. If you're both producer and director, make sure to take the producing hat off during pre-production and while you're shooting. Okay, if you have any questions, ask below and I'd love to answer them. All right. Click the link below to join my free masterclass, The Film Directing Crash Course, 90 minutes of what you need to know about shot planning, working with actors, becoming the wonderful director you could be. I offer this masterclass just once a year, so click the link, don't miss it. If you did miss it, click the link anyways and join the independent film school. I offer free training sessions like that one to screenwriters and filmmakers all the time. I'll see you in there.